Hey everybody, it's Diane Gale here from the blog and YouTube channel Sustainable Slow Living and today I want to show you how to make a simple fall ragtie garland. So easy to do. Um, does take a little bit of time, but I encourage you to get yourself a cup of tea, put on one of your favorite movies, gather up your supplies, and get started because it's really worth it in the end. For supplies, you're going to need some jute twine, you're going to need some beads if you choose to add them, you're going to need um, some fabric, some scissors, some scotch tape, and um, a measuring tape. You can use a ruler or any measuring tape that you have. Uh, I like to use a measuring tape, a flexible measuring tape that's made for sewing. Uh, quite honestly, because everything is currently packed up, what I did to measure for this project is I just measured one little piece of string the size that I needed it, and cut that piece of string and then used that to uh, measure up for my strips, which is what you need the measuring tape for. As far as the wooden beads that I used for the project, they were an inexpensive wooden bead that I bought years and years ago, probably on some craft clearance. I know that they're still available. <clears throat> I like them for this project a lot because they're kind of chunky. Um, and that was the look that I wanted. I did have to make some of the holes in them a little bit bigger, but I didn't have to use a drill or anything like that. I actually just took the end of um, a pen and just kind of hollowed out. Some of the, the um, entryways to the holes were a little bit boogered up. And as far as material is concerned, when you're making a ragtie garland, you can use any material that you choose, but the weight and the flexibility of the material will change the way that your garland hangs. And because I wanted a scrappy look, I went with a lightweight cotton. And besides, lightweight cotton is fun when you're in a fabric store, it's inexpensive, and there's tons of material to choose from. I used 30 beads to make a approximately six foot fall rag tie garland and I bought, so you need five different fabrics. I chose to do, to double up on the brown in each little segment. So I did four different fabrics. If you get them at a half yard, which is the least that most places will sell you, then your pieces are gonna be 18 inches wide. And you're gonna to wanna to cut that down to a 12 inch strip. So this is 12 inches from top to bottom. This piece was obviously a lot bigger because I already made a ragtie garland. I wanted to show you the finished project for product, but I'm also going to show you how to make it yourself. So we're gonna start with the back side of our fabric. It's better to work on the back side of your fabric because you are going to use um, to make marks. Like I said, I took a little piece of string and I cut it to an inch and a half because that's how wide I want my fabric strips to be. Um, you can use a pencil or a pen, but try not to make too much of an intrusive mark because you really just don't want it to show up on your fabric. And you're just gonna mark this off like that, all the way down as many strips as you need. For the six foot strand that I made, I needed 10 strips of each of my three colors and two strips of brown. And then you're gonna take your fabric and you're going to take a pair of scissors and you're going to lay the fabric in front of you so that it's straight and take your scissors and just make a small snip where each mark is. You probably only want about a half inch snip. This is just to make it so that you have a starting point to tear your fabric. Then you will take the fabric at that cut and just simply tear it, which will leave you with a fabric strip. These are what I have left from the garland that I made. So we're gonna use a couple of these today. I took mine when I was doing it and I laid them out kind of, um, kind of in the order because of the brown being used twice. It wasn't exactly in the order, but kind of in the order that I was going to use them. I don't know, simple things like that make it easier for me to work. And then if you're making just a six foot garland, 
you're going to want to cut a six foot piece of jute twine. I am not cutting a six foot piece today because again this is just for demonstration purposes. You're going to want to take about the last six inches or so of the twine and just tie a loop in it. That loop is what you're going to use to hang your garland up. Um, you can make a slip knot. I felt like that was um, a bad plan. I thought that slip knot could potentially come undone. So really all you want is just a little loop. Jute twine, the great thing about working with jute twine is it stick, like it'll hold. That knot will hold in jute twine so you don't have to worry about it. And then you're going to take the strip that you're going to use. You are going to fold it in half. Just press it down with your fingers a little bit. So to kind of encourage it to stay folded in half. Obviously it is not going to stay folded in half completely, but you are looking for a shabby shaggy kind of look. So that's okay. Once you have your strip folded in half, you're going to take and fold it in half the other way. You're going to lay it over your jute twine and then take your two ends, bring them up through the loop. <clears throat> I'm doing this in a very awkward position, so I'm sorry that um, it's probably not looking like it's going smoothly. So up over the loop, tighten it, and pull it down to the end. Just like that. We'll do another one. I have a feeling that um, a lot of that was off camera. So here we go. You're going to take your fabric, fold it in half, encourage it to stay folded by pressing it down, fold it in half the other way, lay the loop over the twine, get the ends of the fabric, bring them up behind the loop and through Pull it, you can slide it down, tighten it, and there you are. You're going to do that <clears throat> with five pieces of fabric, and then we're going to add some beads. But let me tell you a little about this, about the fabric. As you're going, you're going to want to keep laying it down and flattening it out. It just helps it from developing kinks that are going to be harder to get out later. If you're flattening it out all the time, you're going to have a better looking garland in the end. Now the wooden beads that I used, like I said, I had to make some of the holes bigger. They do have a hole that is plenty big enough for jute twine. It's just that the entrance to the holes was a little boogered up. Jute twine, however, unravels when you try to put it through a hole. So what you can do there is you can take a little piece of scotch tape, Wrap it around the end of your twine. Sorry, we want to start at the end of one. And make it a little tight. And then you're just going to take the scissors and cut the extra off. Make sure that it's tightened up. And then your beads will very easily thread onto your jute twine. You'll be able to take them and line them up. So you can see that um, it's all very simple to do. When you are finished and you get to the other end, you're just going to tie a loop in the other end and your garland is ready to hang. You are probably going to want to cut some of the strings that are hanging, but you only want to cut the really long ones because it's the shabby look that you're going for. Here is a 
a better look at the pattern that I used. I put five pieces of fabric. Like I said, I doubled up on the brown. And then they have beads on either side of them. Um, one end of the garland, or I should say both ends, both ends of the garland um, I ended with fabric. When you get to the far end, if you're following the pattern you've been following all along, um, you would put beads on that end. But I liked fabric on both ends, so that's what I did. I'm really happy with how this came out, and it felt like a really great way to celebrate the turning of the calendar to the fall season. I um, took some pictures for the blog that show it um, being displayed in different ways. You can hang it straight along the edge of something, or you can drape it. You can make it as long as you like, or as short as you like. It looks great above headboards, on bookshelves, in doorways, along the edge of a table, and so many other places in your home. If you want to check out more information about how to display it, or just more information in general, as you've heard me say most every video, there's always more information in the blog post than there is in the video because the videos are designed to have um, a reasonable watch time for a YouTube video. So you can head over to the blog and you can check that out. There's going to be a link down below. And I want to thank you for joining me here today, and we will get together again really soon.